Hi, I'm Ms. Havrot. Today I'm going to start a three-part series in how to get an A in math. The first lesson is going to be on teacher-student relationships. The second one is going to be on homework, the how-tos of it. And the third will be on test preparation and writing a test. So today, teacher-student relationships. Now, if you think about what it's like to be a teacher for a minute, and that's kind of important so that you understand how to build a relationship with your teacher, you know that what a teacher wants is a classroom um, with students who are attentive, who are inquiring, who are respectful. Now, the teacher's role is to impart the knowledge of the course and also to assess the students and give them a grade. That's the hard part. So teachers have lots of flexibility in their marking. You need to know that. Um, some people think it's really cut and dry, but there is room for flexibility, especially if you're in a school board like the one I taught in where the grades were to be in numbers from one to four. So you had like a four minus, a four, a four plus, a four plus plus. And those were marks that went from like an 80 to 100. And by the end of the term, the teacher was responsible for converting those one, two, three, fours into a grade. So if the grade was between like, um, let's say a four was 80 to 85, there's lots of room there, isn't there? Five, five grade, five percentage points, that's a lot. So how does a teacher determine what mark they're going to give you? Well, that's gonna depend on how you behave in the classroom, right? If the teacher gets to the point where you have, um, let's say it's all graded, your class has been graded all year long with percentages. So you have uh, a 79 and you would really like an 80 or an 89, you want a 90. What is the teacher going to do um, if you come to them and say, Miss, I'd really like to have a 90 in this course. It's important for my, my application to university. The teacher is going to look at a number of things. First of all, how did you behave in the classroom? Were you attentive? Were you a student that asked questions? Were you a student that came with homework problems? Were you a leader in the classroom? Did you help other students? Were you polite? Did you say thank you as you left the classroom? It may seem like a very silly thing to be thanking a teacher, but I had a teacher, a student who did that one year, and I thought, what a nice thing for you to say to me, to thank me for the lesson that I prepared for you. Now, I, yeah, I know it's my job. It was my job to do that. But at the same time, how you teach it um, is important and you want the students to enjoy it. So maybe I put a little extra work into adding something that was kind of funny or, you know, thank your teacher. It's really, really a nice thing. <laughs> I thank the students for listening as they leave and welcome them when they come in. Now, you have to remember that teachers, when they start the year, they have their class list and they look it over and they see who's in their class and they um, probably talk to other teachers, teachers who have taught you before. They may even go to the extent of looking up your mark from the previous year, which in my school was available. Um, I always did that not because I was trying to pigeonhole a student, but rather that I needed to know which students were going to need more help and which ones would be fine on their own. So, like I said, the, the teachers are, are looking, um, they're trying to organize their classroom so that they have students that are, are um, seated properly. Now, that's a good question. Where should you sit in the classroom? Um, Nothing is more frustrating for a teacher than to have students come in and I generally allow them to pick their own seats, but they sit in the back of the classroom. Why are you sitting in the back of the classroom? Is your vision so good that you have to sit back that far? No, it's just, it's almost disrespectful because I want the students to be close to me. I want to be able to talk to them. I don't want to have to yell. Um, some students sit in the back of the class and then can't see the blackboard and don't ask to be moved. Um, sit in the front, fill it up. Um, you might also want to sit to the right of the teacher, on the teacher's right. 
because studies have shown that, that people tend to look to the right more than they look to the left. And you want the attention of your teacher if you don't sit in the back left corner. But no, you don't. You want, you want the teacher to see you. You want the teacher to know that you're doing your work, that you're paying attention, um, that you're focused. Now, this is a big part, right? How do you focus in the classroom? Well, first thing, as you probably know, is to put your cell phone away. Turn it off, put it in your backpack. In my classroom, I used to make the students um, take a paper bag and write their name on it. Everyone had one. You put it under your desk with your phone in it. That way I knew if they were taking it out. You might um, think, oh, well, I'm, I'm okay with my phone on my desk. I just turned it upside down. But as soon as it vibrates or if there's any little movement, you want to check something. And then you've missed maybe an important point in the lesson. Just put it away. I know it's hard. It's an addictive thing, those little cell phones. And practical and important. But at the same time, just put it away and focus. It's hard, especially if you're in a three-hour class these days. Three hours... I pity the students, I pity the teachers. It's hard to focus for three hours in a math class. I am certain of it. So just try your best and bring yourself back to the lesson whenever you get distracted because you might miss an important point. Probably you will, right? That's how it goes. Now for your classroom, make sure that you're coming with a notebook that's math specific. Um, some students like to use uh, graph paper notebooks. They're really handy if you also have to draw graphs in the class. Um, I think they're great if, if a student is able to have that, that kind of a math book because when you do your, your graphing, it's nice and neat and organized and easy to see what you were supposed to be doing. Um, also, bring pencils and erasers. Don't try to do your math in ink. No one is perfect. If you make a mistake, it's easy to erase it. You want your notebook to be neat so that when time comes to study that you know what you wrote. You don't have all kinds of scribbles all over it and you'll feel better about looking at it. Some students use markers, uh, colored, colored markers to underline things, colors for maybe outlining a graph once they've drawn it in pencil. Um, all those things are handy and whatever works for you is what you should do. So remember that your student-teacher your student -teacher relationship is important for another reason. And that is that teachers are responsible for making recommendations for students, of students, for scholarships, for awards. You might want to ask a teacher to write a job reference letter for you. So if you have built a good relationship with a teacher, and this is important, you know, um, I told my grade 12 class, it's how you behave around your teachers in the end when, when it comes to awards. And, you know, there's money to be had there, right? If you're a student who was disrespectful, always talking, uh, you know, paying the butt in the classroom, teacher's going to say, he doesn't deserve the $1,000 scholarship that we have. He's a great student. He has great marks. But I would choose somebody else. So don't be that. Be the one that gets chosen by your teacher by developing a good relationship. And that means coming in for extra help when you need it, asking questions in the classroom. Now, the other thing was I wanted to mention was one year I had two grade 11 classes. And one of the classes, I hardly knew they were there. I mean, some teachers would say, well, that's great. I just had to teach and then I could let them do their homework. And... Um, not for me. I mean, the other class asked lots of questions. They, you know, they, they goofed around a bit, but they weren't disrespectful. So you can have fun in the class, but don't just sit there like a bump on a log. Ask a question, pay attention, focus, so that when you go home to do your homework, it's going to be easy because you paid attention in the classroom. Okay, so that's my first little video for you on student teaching teacher relationships. And in the next video, I'll be talking about homework, how to do it. And then the last one will be on tests. Bye for now.